Hey everyone, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with a project start video for this 1-6 scale radio controlled British 5C Firefly. I've been working on this model here for a few weeks and this particular build here is being built for a private commission and will be going to a private collector. As I normally state in my commission build videos, I often take on build projects from models ranging from 1 35th scale all the way up to 1 6th scale. This particular build here, like I said, is going to be fully radio controlled and the model itself is a, the base kit is the ArmorTech M4A45C Sherman Firefly. For many of my longtime subscribers who are watching this video might be scratching their head and experiencing a little deja vu. The reason for that is because this model here is the second M4A4 Firefly kit that I've, that I've assembled from ArmorTech. The first one was assembled from my own personal collection and videos and pictures of that model can be found on my video listings as well as on my Facebook page. The difference between this build and my last build is that this build here is going to be built as a British 5C Firefly as opposed to the converted American M4A4 which was done to my vehicle. Because of the extra mods and differences between the two vehicles, you'll see a lot more differences once the build progresses past this point here. Before I go any further with the video, to answer any questions that I know I'm going to be getting in the comments section, the kit here started off as a ArmorTech 5C Firefly Sherman kit. ArmorTech is a British model company that focuses on producing 1-6 scale radio controlled model tank kits that are all made out of scale thickness metal. Unlike all the other plastic kits that are on the market in which those vehicles are primarily designed to be made as static, ArmorTech kits are designed from the ground up to be radio controlled and feature a lot of engineering as well as other features that are built into the kits which makes them not only a lot easier to assemble radio controlled but also once they are assembled perform very well. If anyone watching this video is interested in acquiring one of these tanks you gotta understand that these models here are long since out of production. Unlike some of the other model companies like Tamiya or Henlong in which they produce a large volume of kits, ArmorTech is a smaller scale model company and because of that they release their kits in small batches. This particular kit here was released back in 2011 and there were only 25 kits produced. Since then, this kit has not yet been re-released as per the date of this video. Because of the low numbers that were produced, finding one secondhand will be very difficult compared to finding a secondhand version of one of their more prolific kits, namely being their Tiger One or Panther. As for how I acquired this kit here, this kit here was purchased by the client when they were first offered. He has held on to the model in unassembled version condition until shipping me the unassembled kit in order for me to assemble and complete it which will be done in the next following project update videos that you'll be seeing here on my YouTube channel. Because the 5C Firefly is at heart an M4A4 Sherman, this model here will be receiving pretty much all the exact same details as well as functions that went into the previous build that I did in which in those build videos I went ahead and went into great detail describing the mods and changes that were made to the kit original in order to improve it and bring it up to the specs that you see on that completed model. Because of the detail went, that went into those videos going over the same mods on this model here will be redundant so I will be frequently re referencing the previous build in order for more thorough analysis on what went into that build. As I stated earlier, the kit was in all unassembled virgin state and I've been assembling and working on the model for the last few weeks. The condition that the tank is in right now, the lower hull detailing and modifications have all been completed and the tank is now ready for its suspension work.
We will be going over this in this video. Starting with the model's interior, as we can see, all of the panels have been assembled, as well as the front transmission cover. And also there are the provisions for mounting on the subfloor, as well as you can see the fasteners from the underhaul detailing, which I'll be going over shortly. All of the fasteners that you see on the build here have been thoroughly secured to the model via Loctite and in many cases, lock washers. The Loctite is 100% required in order to prevent any of these fasteners from rattling, rattling loose while the vehicle is in operation. The lock washers also add extra strength to the fasteners in very specific and load-bearing locations. Like what was discussed in the M4A4 videos is that I went ahead and had to modify the rear wall here of the tank. The Armor Tech kit, the aluminum floor pan, ends directly flush with the sponsons. On the real M4A4 Sherman, however, the plate continues up to the rear plate here. On the real tank, there would be meshwork, as well as the exhaust manifolds for the multi-bank engine, which would come out and descend from these two locations here. These details will be added as the build progresses. As for the material, like on the other build, they are made out of Lexan plastic and have been glued together with adhesives, as well as have been fastened to the vehicle with brass straps along with fasteners. Moving our way to the exterior of the model takes us to first the transmission cover. Just like I mentioned on the previous build, the transmission cover on the ArmorTech Firefly kit is actually a very nice piece and is probably one of the nicest, most eye-catching pieces of the whole tank. It comprised out of three separate pieces of aluminum and flanged together just like on the real unit. Just like with the other build, the mods that went into this from kit original is that of the addition of the cast texturing, the tow eyes, slight reshaping of the sharp edges, rounding all of them over, adding the lip on top, as well as adding the drainage plugs for all the transmission fluid, which is on the sides, as well as on the bottom of the unit. The rivet strip is currently not added yet. However, this detailing will be added as the build progresses. Moving our way rearward, first takes us to the tank's final drive. The final drive that you see here is just like the last final drive on the other build, in which all the armor tech components were assembled, and utilize as ArmorTech did a great job with engineering this component out of the box. The only additions I made, just like with the last unit, is the addition of the integrally casted in disc as well as the rough cast texturing. Also, with like all my ArmorTech builds on the final drive itself, I deburred the main gear and thoroughly lubricated it with grease prior to installation. One difference in between the two builds is that of the screws utilized to install the final drive to the tank. On the real Sherman, as well as on my M4A4, hex bolts were utilized for this application. However, on this build, you notice that I substitute the hex bolts with cap screws. The cap screws are as per the Armor Tech instructions, and the reason for using them is that they have a higher tensile strength than the hex bolts. Even though the other model has been maintenance free and has been a reliable runner with utilizing the different bolts, because this build here is intended for a commission and is going out to a customer, I wanted to make this component here as strong as possible to eliminate any chance of any type of bolt shearing that can or may happen in the future. So the cap screws were utilized instead. Moving to the back, takes the first the fuel cell fasteners. Like I mentioned on the other one, the M4A4 has a row of fasteners on the side hull that affix the internal fuel tanks to the tank. Also, the axis cap, which is on the lower sponson, has also been added and again has been installed via fasteners. Finally, taking us to the final, to the rear idler mounts. The rear idler mounts that you see here are again the kit originals and have also been reworked to make them more accurate as per the last vehicle. 
they feature the same modifications as the lower extension, cast texturing, as well as the added divots. Now, if you notice on this installation here, I went ahead and opted with the hex bolts as opposed to the cap screws like I mentioned on the final drive. The reason for that is, a, is because on the final drive, the components actually thread directly into the transmission. While on this part here, they go th directly through the armor plate and are fixed on the opposite side via a nut. Because of that, getting replacing any sheared off fasteners on this, on this component here are a lot easier than that on the final drive where if you have a shear occur, it's going to be very difficult, if not impossible, to replace the broken unit. However, like I mentioned before, these fasteners here are very strong and the chances of them shearing are very remote, if not impossible. Moving on from the either mount takes us to the mud guards. The mud guards that you see here are just like with the last build, are made out of aluminum plate and are actually affixed to the tank via fasteners. The fasteners are also blended into the bodywork and are no longer visible. Also, like with the last build, they feature the sculpted on weld beads, which act as both a detail element as well as aiding in structural support. As for the rear plate, this is what the component looks like on the exterior, as opposed to the way it looked on the interior. As you can see, the extended plate features all of its weld detailing, which is a very handy coincidence as because of the weld beads that are present on the real vehicle, it camouflages the seam, which would otherwise need to be deleted with layers of bodywork and sanding. With the weld bead covering up the natural seam, it adds for both detail, structure, and it also makes it easier to assemble. Moving our way to the lower hull, takes us to first the bottom quarter panel. Like with the last build, the quarter panel needed to be modified on the Armor Tech original as the Armor Tech kit features a straight angled rear back as opposed to the rounded rear back. The rounded rear backs are found on the M4A4 Shermans. This modification here was done in the exact same format as the M4A4 build in which a PVC tube was simply modified and cut and was bolted to the vehicle to secure it and then blended in with the bodywork. Also added are two new tow eyes which were scratchable from resin and are not the kit supplied ones from ArmorTech. One difference though between this build and my last build is that if we notice this build here the component is roughly casted. After doing more research on the M4A4 after the last build, I learned that on the real Sherman tank, this component here was can, it comprised out of a cast rounded piece that had its toe eyes directly casted into the casting. On the last build, if we recall, I went ahead and welded these pieces here, which is not fully inaccurate as a lot of times these did break in the field and were re-welded. However, for this model here from the ground up, it is a little bit more accurate in having everything precast textured and installed. Also, all of the weld beads again were added as per the real vehicle and also were very handy in deleting any seams. Moving our way to the bottom of the vehicle, the vehicle features all of the bottom detailing which was also found on the other build. This includes the axis panels for the multi-bank engine, the rigidity blisters, the escape hatch, the front plate, drainage plugs, as well as other axis caps. All these components here are bolted directly to the tank and no adhesives were used. Also quick note of mention, like I mentioned before, the M4A4 utilized rounded rigidity blisters for the lower hull as opposed to the triangular ones which were found on the M4A3s. The axis caps that you see here are also the ones found on eastcoastarmory.com.
and were simply mounted to the ArmorTech model. Also, for extra durability, this component here is fastened with both the fasteners around the leading edge, but also there's a hidden fastener in the center. The purpose of the hidden fastener is that because of the way this descends from the lower hull and the, per the propensity of it getting snagged by foreign objects, the center fastener gives it more strength and will prevent it from cracking off if a obstacle of certain mass is struck. In addition to the center fastener, also three fasteners were utilized for the rigidity strips. The fasteners again do two functions. They secure the piece to the tank nice and firmly and also give me the location to mount on the subfloor in which all of the electronics and mechanical equipment will be added shortly later. All of the welds have also been sculpted on, on both the sponsons, the plate junctions, as well as rigidity strips. If we notice these areas here do not have any welds, and that's because these locations here are where the VVSS suspension will be affixed to the tank. Also, if we notice, fixed to the front are the front fender mounts. The fender mounts are my own material. They are sheet metal, bolted directly to the sponson with flattened fasteners, which will make them less capable of snagging foreign objects. And the fenders will be fixed to this location here out of sheet metal as the build progresses. Like I mentioned earlier, the model in this condition here is ready for its suspension modification and installation work. In addition to the suspension, the tank will also start receiving some British and Firefly specific modifications which were different from the M4A4 that is found on my video series. And with that, that concludes this project start video for this 1-6 scale radio controlled ArmorTech M4A4 5C Firefly. If you like this video, stop by and like us on Facebook. And don't forget to check out EastCoastArmory.com for more 1.6 scale builds as well as 1.6 and 1.16 scale detail components. Thank you.